Hey guys, this is a simple performance comparison of the new BE Myers Kiji versus a couple of other infrared illumination devices. Up first is the tried and true D-Ball i2-9007. It has a civilian legal laser-based illuminator. Up next is the Surefire KM2C, aka the Vampire. This is the version for the 2-cell or 6-volt light bodies. This is an LED-based illuminator, basically an infrared flashlight. Up next is the PEC-15 with a full-power laser-based illuminator. Finally, the new BE Myers Kiji. This is a standalone version of the illuminator from the civilian-powered mall. I have the 3-degree version of the Kiji, which is significantly more focused than the 10-degree version, although both of them have a flip-over diffuser cap for ultra-wide flood illumination if required. The Kiji has four power levels and was set to the highest power level for all of these tests. The first comparison shows these illuminators in sequence, pointing to a tree line about 350 yards away. Unsurprisingly, the civilian-powered D-Ball doesn't have the capability to meaningfully illuminate past about 100 yards or so. The Surefire KM2C Vampire Head does have significantly more output, at least in terms of raw horsepower. However, it's so unfocused that it doesn't end up being significantly more usable than the i2. The full-power illuminator on the PEC-15 provides ample performance all the way out beyond 350 yards. This one is set to about medium focus. We could tighten it up more if we needed to go farther, or we could flood it out a little bit more if we wanted more spill at close range. We'll show some comparison to that in a little bit. Last up is the Kiji. First with the diffuser cap on, you can see that it's got even more spill than a vampire head. With the diffuser cap off, the beam is significantly more focused and does provide adequate illumination out to about 350 yards. However, as you can see, it's still not nearly as focused as the PEC-15, and as I mentioned, the PEC-15 was only on about medium focus. Next is a side-by-side -side and then alternating comparison between the PEC-15 in dual high mode, so high laser, high illuminator, and the Kiji paired with a Steiner OTAL-C civilian-powered laser. This is where I think you can start to see a potential issue with the Kiji. It has way more flood than the PEC-15. When we add in the laser as a reference point to where we're trying to aim, you can see that when I'm actually aiming at the base of the tree line, I get quite a lot of spill onto the grass between me and the target. This is essentially wasted illumination, but it also has the potential problem of causing auto-gain or auto-gating on the tubes to make our actual intended target harder to see. It doesn't do me any good to illuminate the ground in front of me, and if it causes my tube to auto-gate, or if it causes automatic brightness control to kick in, then it's actually going to make my target more difficult to see, which is pretty counterproductive. It's the same issue we have with the vampires, although not to the same extent, because the Kiji is significantly more focused. This next test just shows the range of focus possible with the PEC-15 illuminator. As you can see, we can dial it to the point where, at this close range of only about 350 yards, it looks just like another laser pointer. If we were testing these devices at, say, 700 yards instead of 350 yards, that additional focus would be very useful. For this next test, I put the Surefire Vampire light on a picnic table pointing back towards the camera, and then tried to illuminate past it using other devices. The D-Ball i2 is at least focused enough to illuminate the picnic table and the tree next to it. However, it doesn't have enough power to meaningfully illuminate the tree line, which is about 50 to 100 yards behind the picnic table with the vampire on it. The PEC-15 has no issues illuminating anything in the scene that we want to, even at only medium focus. Same story with the Kiji, at least in this scenario. It's got ample performance to push past the opposing illuminator and at least get us all the way out to 100 yards, no problem. I'll have a follow-up video soon talking specifically about the Kiji in detail. We'll go over how to set it up, how to use it, how the practical considerations of using it compare to other, more dedicated, multi-function laser devices, and try to figure out what, if anything, it's best suited for. Stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching. See you guys later.